Tuxedo Visa 1.0 MPI SE 2017 Review. The CETA Visa has wowed in other iterations, but how will the entry-level 1.0-liter MPI version stack up in the UK? We've been to North Wales to find out. What is it? The Avisa first went on sale in the UK in 1985 and this, the latest generation, is the best yet. This is the first Volkswagen Group car based on the MQB A0 platform, which means it should promise much in the way of handling, ride and comfort. There are four five-door only models on offer, S, SE, FR and a new premium Zlens. Initially there are three, three-cylinder petrol engines, 74 bhp 1.0 mpi, 93 ps 1.0 tsi and 113 bhp 1.0 tsi. A 148 bhp, 1.5 tsi evo will come later in 2017, but don't get too excited, Seath says there are no plans for a Cupra. There's a choice of 5-speed manual transmission on 74 bhp and 93 bhp versions, and 6-speed on the 113 bhp and forthcoming 148 bhp EVO versions. A DSG Auto is available on the 113 bhp Father there will also be 83 bhp and 93 bhp 1.6 DDI diesels available later. The naturally aspirated 74 bhp 1.0 MPI engine is available in S, SE and Zlens trim levels and, although the combined fuel consumption is slightly worse than the 93 bhp TSI turbo engine at 57.6 miles per gallon compared with 60.1 miles per gallon, choosing the least powerful engine drops the insurance group from to 5E from 11E for the S and SE and from 12E to 6E on the Zlens. Wheel sizes range from 15 inch on the S and SE to 16 inch on the Zlens and a striking 17 inch design for the father and side. S models comes with basic black and white 5.0 inch touchscreens but the SE upgrades to color. FR and Zlens models get 8.0 inch color touchscreens including voice recognition and sat nav as standard as well as apps such as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The same setup is an option on the SE. What's it like? Beauty may be in the eye of the beholder but it is probably safe to say the new Avisa is a pretty little car with great proportions and striking looks from almost any angle. Inside, it is the same story with quadrilateral shapes carried across features such as door handles, air vents and door mirrors to create a slick, harmonious feel throughout the cabin. The dash is clean and classy despite the use of inexpensive looking surface materials and touchscreens are smoothly integrated at its center. Instruments are crisp and expensive looking, giving a premium feel to the cabin. It's generally a fun place to be and spacious too, with plenty of room for six footers to sit one behind the other and a usefully shaped 355 liter boot, which is 63 liters bigger than that of the outgoing model. The naturally aspirated 74 bhp, 1.0 MPI engine tested here in SE spec is predictably sluggish in a car weighing a tad over a ton. Accelerating requires patience and overtaking maneuvers a deal of strategic planning but, once it is up to speed, it will cruise at 70 miles per hour without any fuss. The gearbox is pleasingly light shifting and the brakes are not over sensitive with a good feel. The steering is less responsive and feels slightly less agile than the benchmark Fiesta in that crucial moment the wheel is moved away from the straight ahead and, in that sense, it doesn't convey the same sense of excitement. Because of that, the Avisa may be missing a trick in that sometimes subliminal connection a car makes with a driver, but it doesn't detract from the fact that it is supremely poised with a good ride, decent body control and no vices. Ford Shelby Mustang GT 350R 2017 Review Ford has tried to turn the Mustang into a track machine by putting it on a diet and giving it a new engine. Has it worked? What is it? To put it politely, the Ford Mustang GT isn't the first car you choose to develop into a stripped-out, no-compromise track machine. 
For one thing it's a sizable old bus, it's 30 centimeters longer than the Porsche 911, a rather more obvious candidate, and some 10 centimeters wider, and for another, it weighs the better part of 1,800 kilograms. There wasn't a great deal Ford Performance could do about the Mustang's size, but to give the Shelby GT 350R a fighting chance on track, it ditched the rear seats, stereo, sat-nav and air conditioning, although the latter three items can be added back in optionally. The wheels are exotic carbon fiber items, too, saving 6 kilograms at each corner. The total weight loss over the 5.0 GT is 60 kilograms, which is useful if not exactly transformative. The entire chassis has been overhauled with operated components and a much more track-focused setup, while a comprehensive aerodynamic package promises much more downforce than the regular car. Most unusually, though, the warbling V8 engine that powers the conventional Mustang has been ditched for a high revving 5.2-liter flat-plane crank V8. That's something of a departure for an American muscle car. Flat plane cranks and high revving V8s have been the preserve of European sports cars until now. The new motor revs beyond 8,000 revolutions per minute, whereas the outgoing cross plane V8 doesn't reach far beyond 6,500 revolutions per minute. The power and torque figures hint at a rev V8 rather than a lazy, torque rich bruiser, too. 526 bhp at 7,500 revolutions per minute and 429 pounds foot at 4,750 revolutions per minute are not typical Mustang numbers. The soundtrack isn't typical Mustang either, the rumbling score replaced by highly strung snarls and barks. What's it like? As the most extreme Mustang to date, the GT 350R goes to lengths not even the GT 350 model would have considered in the pursuit of racetrack performance. In fact, Ford says it didn't even concern itself with trying to make the GT 350R work on the public road. The standard car's plush leather chairs have been swapped out for heavily bolstered regress, while the steering wheel is wrapped in Alcantara. The sports seats are actually set an inch or two lower than the standard items, and with the steering column at full extension, the seating position is just about perfect. If Ford wants the GT 350R to be assessed as a track car, there are few better places to do just that than Thruxton. The UK's fastest race track is a stern test of car and driver, mixing ballsy high-speed sequences with tight and technical sections. The GT 350R is more than up to it. Whereas the Mustang GT feels about as adept on circuit as a canal boat would, this stripped out model feels right at home. That much more aggressive suspension setup takes away all of the wallow and floatiness of the standard car, replacing it with agility, control, and precision. There are sections of Thruxton that demand so many different things from a car all at once the start of the lap. For instance, combines a fast left-hand bend with a sharp crest and a heavy braking zone. Many cars would be completely flummoxed by that sequence, but the GT 350R swallows it up without any trouble whatsoever. The steering is ultra-sharp and direct, the big Brembo brakes are excellent and the fat Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires generate enormous grip and traction. In the high-speed sections, such as the intimidatingly fast church corner, the car is incredibly stable, thanks in part to the aero package. There's so little body roll or dive under braking that you quickly forget just how big and, let's be honest, heavy the GT 350R is. Chasing an 8,000 revolutions per minute redline in a Mustang is a novel experience. The Zingy V8 is right at the heart of the driving experience and it flings the car along at a mighty rate. It's also so much more responsive than the GT's cross-plane V8, it takes only a quick stab of the accelerator to bring the revs up during a downshift, whereas you really have to get into the GT's throttle pedal to awaken the engine, and the engine.